Okay, so the, the recording is now on. So uh, there are we talk about variability, variation, and uh, and we see how it takes place in, in quantitative data, and any kind of a analysis, statistical analysis would would usually uh, differentiate between two kinds of variation. Uh, one one is more systematic variation, and by systematic, I mean that this kind of variation can be explained using other variables. Remember earlier, I talked about how this R variation in R data can is interesting as the difference between different regions can actually be explained or accounted for by the onset date of uh, by the by the onset of the of the uh, of the wave, right? Of, of the pandemic. So this is trying to explain this kind of differences using some other variables, okay? So the other variables can also be represented in quantitatively in some way. It can be group membership, remember? If you have experiment, you can give one to the experiment group and zero to the other experiment, uh, to the control group. And we have variation uh, between these two groups. That usually it means that the mean of the mean of uh, the dependent variable, in my case, is stockpiling intention. Uh, tend to if, if it's systematically different between these two groups, then that, that's a systematic variation, right? That can be explained by the zero and one the group membership. But there's also random variation, right? So the variation can also happen randomly. A lot of individual differences are considered random, right? Um, unless you started to know what other variables can actually influence it, it remains random. And another common type of, of random variation is measurement error, which means if you use a measure to measure the same thing under the same condition over and over again, you get different readings. If you use extremely uh, precise measure, you get variations, right? So a more precise measure has smaller measurement error, right? The variation tend to be smaller, but those variations are considered random. Okay, so uh, so that that random variation is usually compared to the systematic variation. Okay, so if the systematic variation is large enough, then it can be said to actually it is systematic, not random anymore. Okay? So this is the source of variation, and again. Uh, we talk about a histogram, and, and there's a histogram. And a histogram really shows us the variation that's going on within a particular a sample on a particular variable, on a single variable. Right? So, so to read the histogram, we have to consider the shape, right? We have to consider where is the center and the spread and whether there are any outliers. So the shape is usually uh, called a symmetry or a skewness, right? So uh, there's also uh, the modality, which means that how many peaks are out there. So this is a, a symmetric distribution, which means that the data towards the left of this 10 and towards the right hand side of the 10 are look asymmetrical, okay, the, the distribution. And it has only one peak. And this is a symmetric distribution, but it has two peaks, right? And again, peak means frequency. So a, a lot of a lot of data data points at that particular value, right? In this case, ten and twenty. So close to five hundred and ten, and like close to five hundred and twenty. And in the middle, between ten and twenty, fifteen, there's low frequency, right? So it's peaked and it's symmetric at the same time. And in this case, it's a, a symmetric and it's also uniform distribution, right? So uh, it's there's no peaks, right? So each, uh, so the, it seems that the value, uh, you can take the value from one to 10, first of all, if you look at the x-axis, and the, the frequency that this variable take one, two, three, four to 10 are uh, similar, okay? So this is the shape of the histogram, and uh, so this is another example, right? This is a, this is a a convenience store collected from uh, 537 customers, 
on how much they spend on the visit. So again, when looking at the graph, you, you first look at what what is it, what does the x axis mean, what does the y axis mean. Uh, the x axis here is the dollar spent, and again, it's it's ordered from smaller zero to higher ninety, right? So uh, you can see that there are two peaks, right? So there's a so you can say that the majority of them spend around twenty five dollars, but there, there seems to be a cluster of customers who spend about fifty to fifty five pounds, right? So you can you can consider why is this the case? Is this a is there some kind of a product that attract a particular customer got coming to the convenience store to buy it? But it provides information. That's the key, right? So so you have two different modes for this distribution here. And shape uh, you can also talk about how it's skewed. So uh, skew means that it's not symmetrical, and the most frequent value tend to be on one end or the other end of the whole spectrum. So, so what we are looking here is actually called a skewed right distribution. Okay, so this is often people can get confused, like saying that this looks like skewed left to me, but it's called skewed right because it is uh, at the, this is the most frequent value, which is called the mode. To the right hand side of the mode, there is actually more data points than to the left hand side of the mode. So it has a bigger tail towards the right hand side of the mode. Okay, so this is called skewed right distribution, and skewed left is just the other way. And you can see that the, the most frequent value to the left of the most frequent value, there's actually more data, more data towards the left. Okay. We also want to look at uh, center uh, spread and outliers, right? So the center is the 50-50 center of the distribution, it's midpoint, if it's symmetrical, right? If it's uh, skewed, then the center usually could mean the mode, like the, the tallest point is usually considered center, or it's, it could be the center where the data is 50-50, then you will be to the right-hand side of the mode. But we can look at the spread, right, the range of the value, and we can also look at outliers who fall out of the overall pattern. And here we can see there's a 15 or that is an outlier. And sometimes, usually, it suggests that there's some kind of a data entry mistake, which can cause a lot of confusions. I mean, I mean, like, uh, make no mistake, that quantitative data is produced by human, and at some point there's some kind of a human involvement. When there's human involvement, there's uh, mistakes happens. A few days ago in the US COVID-19 data, there was a state that reported 180,000 cases in a day, which turned out to be a mistake that they, uh, so a person who uh, did the data entry uh, for, forgot about a uh, comma, right? So it didn't split 180 and 100. So it reads 180,000 and 100, right? And that got spread out in like a matter of minutes, right? And they would be able to correct that in a few, uh, I think it took them like 20 minutes to correct that, which is quite impressive to locate that error. But uh, it causes some kind of, uh, I don't know, stir in the, because nowadays information travels really fast. So outliers. So histogram is just a, a graphic de depiction before we move on to actually making one, right? So uh, the features of the histogram can often reveal very quite valuable information about the data. So what I'm going to do is do a quick exercise. Uh, I will show you three different histogram, and you can, uh, based on uh, the, the look of the histogram, you, you should be able to guess what uh, what kind of data is it from. Right? So I'm, I was planning to do it on a uh, Mentimeter, but let's just do it on through chat. Okay, uh, that 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 should also work. So, okay, so, okay, like, don't go to Mentimeter, just tell me uh, which one, okay? So which of the following is mo most likely to be the data variable for this particular histogram that's presented on the screen? The f okay, let's, let's give a number. One, uh, level A math scores of 1,000 future engineers, Two, uh, results of rolling a six-sided die 1,000 times. Three, shoe sizes of 1,000 men and women. Four, prices of 1,000 London homes. 
So uh, if you if you think level A, say one in your chat, results of rolling a six dice, uh, six sided die, give me give me two in the chat, three and four. Just just say it on the chat. Okay, some people, most people say, some of you say one, some of you said three. Shoe size of a thousand men and women. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a few more, a few more minutes to, to respond to this. Some of you said three, so it's a between one and three. Okay, so like two is not the option. Then, London homes, the price of a thousand London homes for some. Okay, for some reason you got a feeling that this might not be representative, might not be indicating how the prices of London homes might look like. Okay. So it's between one and three. Uh, let me see if I show the correct answer or not. Oh, so the correct answer is one, okay? So the math score of a thousand future engineers. Well, if it's future engineers, they're supposed to be good at math, right? So the level A math score should be a little bit higher than a normal distribution. So it should be tilted or skewed towards the left in this case, right? And why is it not this true size of a thousand men and women? We'll get there when we see the distribution that look like that. So, okay, off to the next, uh, next question. Again, so this, this histogram, again, one, two, three, four, which one of the following is most likely to be the data variable for? This histogram. Yeah, say it in. Okay, so most of you can now realize that the, the shoe size of men and women probably are different in terms of how uh, the average size is. So there should be two peaks, right? So uh, the higher the peak to the to the right is the is the average for men, and the peak to the left is the average for women, right? So that, so yes, it's a three, a shoe size of a thousand men and women. Okay, so you see, like the it's histogram is very intuitive, and a way of understanding the distribution of data. And this one, uh, which one is this? So most of you could probably get it. If you roll a six-sided die a thousand times, it's going to be equally distributed across the six possible values, right? So the value is from one to six, and then the frequency should be uh, relatively equal, unless it's a, it's a what they call the rigged die, right? So in, in actually in this case, it might be rigged a little bit because you don't see one as often as the other. But again, this could just be a random error, right? So we'll talk about random error earlier. So the, 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 the variation can be random, right? So in this case, uh, it could be that the, the one is getting uh, less frequency than the others, but it's completely due to randomness. Okay? So the final one, of course, this is, which one is this? Uh, this histogram. Which one does that represent? And of course, there's only one option left. It's the price of 1,000 London homes. And why is the, uh, the, the price of 1,000 London homes look like this, right? So if we, if we examine this histogram a little bit further, we notice that, we notice that there are some extreme outliers to the right-hand side. So which probably indicate that there are some extremely expensive homes. I was on Facebook the other day. I don't know why Facebook gave me these advertisement of uh, a home in Regent's Park that cost about uh, 120,000 per month or 20,000 per week, pound per week to rent, you know. Those homes should be those homes that you see outliers to the right. Uh, and most homes are to, so, so there's also this, uh, this progression from, from, the, 
from the mode, which is most frequent homes in London, probably 400,000, 500,000 K, progressively towards extremely higher uh, expensive homes, right? So as you can see that really histogram really tells you a lot about what's going on in the data of a single variable. So in the next step, uh, I'm going to make a histogram in Excel. I tried it, which turned out much more difficult than I thought to get the result that I wanted, okay? So uh, the data, data file is what I opened uh, sent you earlier. So what we were doing here is going to make a histogram uh, for the variable of cumulative lab confirmed cases for upper tier local authorities, which is uh, one of the data sheets. And this is a histogram, and I already made it in there. So if you if you scroll over to the right most right hand side sheet, you will see the histogram in there. And but I'll, I'll show you how it is made. And again, Excel make it extremely difficult. If you use SPSS, it's easier, slightly easier. Uh, if you use R, it's super quick. Uh, but in Excel, they made it kind of difficult, especially if you want to specify different kind of intervals. Remember the bin that I talked about earlier? They made it re really difficult. So anyway, so let me just uh, stop sharing the PowerPoint with you and went to went to the and go to the Excel file, okay? So you should be able to Excel, see the Excel file that I'm presenting to you uh, on the screen. And wait a second, wait a second. So you, sh you should be able to see the Excel file. This is really, really difficult. Uh, let me do it like this. Make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so here's the Excel file. And you can see that this is the upper May 16. Uh, uh, so it's upper tiered local, local authority. That's the name of the area and area code. Now, the easiest way of doing this, which will give you very little control, click insert, and there's the histogram option, right? So, but this gives you the result that doesn't doesn't allow you to change the x-axis, yeah? which is very annoying, I found. But if you just click this, it gives you a very quick histogram, okay? And, okay, let me just, just, just click on that. It gives you some kind of a quick and easy histogram, okay? And you can change the chart title or anything. Uh, so here, here you go, uh, you have this histogram. You notice that uh, on the x-axis, it is it, the bin. Uh, the bin is 450, so it's from 17 to 467, 467 917, all the way to 4517. Okay, so again, the the y uh, the x-axis is a binned variable, it's, it's more like categorized, a continuous variable, but it's in order from smaller to highest, represents the uh, number of cases so far. And the, the uh, y-axis is the frequency, right? And as I found out, there's not much you can do about this, this histogram, and it kind of gives you an idea of the most, the most of these authorities have a case number between 467 to 917. But I, it's just not enough. It's, it's this, if you look at the original data, you can see that it's more fine-tuned. Uh, and somehow a lot of information got lost here, right? So this is the default option. And if you have Excel on your own computer, you can install some kind of an add-in 
called analysis that give you some more advanced analysis options that allows you to make histogram. But unfortunately, me using the Office 365 from the university did not could not allow it didn't allow me to add any add-ins. Right? So that's unfortunate. So, but I figured out a way to to do the histogram, which happened to be give me some kind of control, which is using something that we call a pivot table. Okay. So all you have to do is uh, you you select this, and you select insert. And you click on pivot table. Okay, so pivot table, as you know or may or may not know, it's just a, a, a some kind of a summary table from the data that exists. So it's like a, some kind of advanced uh, analysis option for Excel uh, that doesn't really need to involve any kind of uh, any uh, kind of uh, formula. Okay, equation. So you click on clean, uh, pivot table. It will ask you to select. You already select this, and it will ask you to where to place the pivot table. You can select new worksheet, click OK. It doesn't give you anything, but it shows you this pivot table view. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. Show you this pivot table view. Now you can see that to the right hand side is pivot table fields, and if you click this, and it give you a summary, right? And you can also drag it into the rows, and now it gives you that. So it's important to keep in mind what exactly it is, right? So, so these are the same, first of all, but the labels, you can change the labels to by right click on it and okay, I'm a little bit lost here. Uh, I'm just going to change this to instead of sum, you can change it to count. I think that's what I had in there, right? Absolutely not. Okay, uh, let me think about this for a bit. Okay, yes, that's right. So now you have count, and you have these values. So each value is from one county, uh, one is a county or upper tier local authority. Okay. So now you have these counts, right? So each is only has one count, or some has two counts. Oh yeah, because you have the same same numbers. Uh, that okay. So you have 149 because you have some overlays in the middle. Okay, so now the next step is really important. You want to group this by by grouping these according to values. You're basically creating bins. So what you do is that you right click on any of it. You can there will be option called group, and it only applies to the row labels, right? So if you cl click on group, it will ask you where you start, where it ends. Okay, now you have more options here. You can say it starts at zero, ends at five thousand, but the by is the is the is the bin value or the interval that you want. Now you want to group it by starting at five zero five thousand and it by two hundred. Okay. And if you create yes, now that gives you the data that you required to create a histogram. Okay. Now you can you can select this, and I think you can have insert a pivot chart, and there you have it. You have the pivot chart, and then you can select these, select these bars to change the way it looks. You can have gap width. Smaller gap width to have bigger ones, right? And you can delete the things that you want, you don't need, like these little things. So there you have you have, you have a histogram. Okay, sorry about that. You have a histogram. Now the neat thing about this is that it gives you a more control about the bin size. 
So now you can see this one, this histogram, it looks much more detailed than the histogram we created before because now we have smaller bins, smaller intervals. And we can see that this is a right skewed, yeah? And most cases, uh, the, the most frequent value seems to be between 600 and 799, where the 35 of the 150 of local authority have that. But we have some extremely high ones from 4,400 to 4,500, uh, to 4,600, 3,200. You have some of them, the, the, some of the uh, local authorities have extremely high number of cases. If you change the bin by again, right click, saying group, how, if you group by 100, you get a more fine tuned histogram. Now you see more clearly what you didn't see before, right? There's, the fidelity has increased. Uh, if you group it by 500, and then you lose a lot of that value, a lot of that, a lot of information when you move away. So this is uh, not the easiest way, but it gives you flexibility, right? Now here we look at a, a graphic representation of variation or, or variability, or we call which we call a frequency a frequency distribution. Okay, so called frequency because we're using frequency data here. Now we see that some counties or some local authorities seems to have higher, higher numbers of cases than the others. And when the average is somewhere between uh, 600 to 800, 900 cases. This brought us the, the question that I mentioned earlier. Uh, variation can be explained. Right. Explaining variation, modeling variation is really the key of statistics or any data analysis. So which asks, brings us to the question, why do some counties or some local authorities have higher number of cases and some have lower cases? What kind of factors influence, determines that? Right? What kind of factors are associated with that? Uh, so that will be uh, the topic for our next lecture. So before, uh, so which we will, we will further explore how to using graphics to depict not just a single variable, but the relationship between two variables, either a categorical variable and or a quantitative variable. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the I'm going to go back to the uh, PowerPoint slides. Some of you have some questions. Total value, cumulative left cases. Okay, are there any questions about how to create this chart? I know that it's not very. Let me delete that and bring out the. Where's the pivot table view? Whoops, if you. I cannot see the pivot table view. Uh, let me just see it short here. Are there any questions about how that was created? I couldn't see the right clicking. Oh, like it's not displayed on the screen. That's interesting. If you just right click on any of those row labels, you should be able to see a, a menu called, there's menu cases called group ungroup. Okay, so if you just ungroup it, it goes back to the to the original case. So this is when it's ungrouped. It looked like this in the pivot table. So if you click right click any of these row label, any value, you can start to group them, right? Did you, can you see the pop-up window said grouping? Can you see the pop-up window said grouping on, on top of the uh, oh no, that's strange. Oh gosh, this is this is the uh, this is the the thing about 
I'm sharing. Okay, let me share the whole screen to you, with you so that you can see it better, okay? I'll just share my screen. Okay, I'm sharing my desktop with you right now so you can see my whole desktop, right? So now I'm gonna just uh, do it again. Uh, now you can see this. You, you insert pivot table. Okay, so it gives you pivot table with nothing, and and now you select this, and you have count here, and then you also drag it to rows. Okay, so this is already grouped, right? So now if you ungroup it, it becomes this is what it looked like. So you have count here. Make sure this is count. If it's if it's a sum, make sure you go to field settings and use use count, not sum, right? And these are just rows. Which are the row labels are the numbers are, are the values, and they are sorted. You can notice they are already sorted to you, but each value indicates the number of cases in the local uh, in the upper tier local authority. Okay, right click right click on any of those row labels. Right click here, you have group, and you start at zero. 5,000, by say 200, voila. And then you have that, and then you can insert, use uh, pivot charts. Yeah, there you go, there's pivot chart here. And then you have this chart. And you can cl double click on that, you'll be able, should be able to adjust the, some, adjust the uh, how the columns how the bars look like by decreasing the gap width to they're connected now you, you see that okay well that's the you know you can right click again if you want to change the bin the bin size uh group if you just do it by 100 okay Okay, how do I make the sum values be the count of cumulative? Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Uh, okay, so the pivot chart, the pivot table, you should you should see the pivot table uh, to the right, first of all. Uh, let me find it, how to make it appear. Pivot chart, field list, okay. That's the field list. Now you can remove the field list just by simply deleting them, right? You can just remove the field, and if you remove both fields, there, there will be nothing left. And remove field, right? So, but you have this data called cumulative lab confirmed cases, which is you created from there. So, if you, you right click on, on, on here, the values, you go to field settings. Here, you can have sum or count. Right. Make sure you're on count because if it's the sum, it's uh, the total number of cases in all the counties. And you will say sum of cumulative. But if you just change it field settings, summarize by count. Yeah. And okay, you have count. Now 150 is the number of local authorities. You drag it again to rows. To create a row, which should be ungrouped, and then you group it. Okay, group five zero five thousand by one hundred. Then you have the data for these are the frequencies again, huh? and. This means like there are 14 counties that have 500, 599 cases, 23, 14. Again, ordered from the small, ordered from the smallest to the largest, and then you, ins you go to somewhere 
pivot table analysis, pivot chart. I will give you the chart. And from the chart, you can click on that, click on these to bring out the, and you make sure you select all of them, and then the, make the gap width smaller to make it look better. And there you have it. So that's how you make a histogram from Excel using pivot chart, pivot table. Okay, uh, I hope that was with the row labels, not the chart. You have to, okay, anyway, uh, play around with it. Uh, sorry, I still haven't. And a quick summary of what happened today. So, well, after after the uh, whole, after the introduction to the research design and everything, uh, so we talk about distribution and variation and and how the variation can be of a continuous variable can be depicted using the histogram. For categor categorical variable, we use pie charts, bar charts, doesn't matter. But for quantitative variable, we use histograms. And remember, it's always ordered from the smallest value to the largest value. And also remember that histogram can be used kind of to, 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 to determine the percentage of values that fall into a certain interval. Okay, that's really important to keep in mind. So anyway, so next lecture will be on this Thursday, and again from one to four. I I will add all of you, uh, try to add all of you onto the Teams channel, okay? So you will have access to the uh, LSS uh, D DSTs, uh, the team channel for the for the for the, for this course, and also I will send all of you an email because I have a list of of your emails, and hopefully I, I think I'm going to use Zoom for the next session, for the next lecture. But what we will be doing is first of all we will look at descriptive statistics statistics such as mean, standard deviation, mode, median, and all that. And then we're moving on how to depict the different the relationships between two variables, uh, thus addressing the concept of covariation. Remember the key to uh, this, the the, sen the essence of statistical analysis is to explain these variations using other factors, uh, other variables, using one variable to explain the systematic variation within another variable. Okay. So I'm going to stop recording now, and I'll stay around if you have some questions. And if not, uh, I'll see you next lecture. Thank you very much.